Rockford. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. So in the last episode, we got the lift in the new shop. There's projects already underway and there's a new dog over here, but we'll talk about her in a minute. So last year when I did the Hemi swap, I did my own DIY exhaust pretty much from the headers back. Now it turned out really good. Not really good. It actually didn't turn out that great. It did work. It sounds really good, but as you can tell, it hung down too low. So I couldn't run any skid plates. So today, hopefully we're going to redo the exhaust here as well as install a nice Barnes four wheel drive, heavy duty skid plate. I've been running the factory one ever since I've had the Jeep and it's definitely time to upgrade. We're going to knock out this exhaust, drop that skid plate on and this little puppy here just showed up about two hours ago. She's a good little girl, but got to find out who she is for now. That's Miley, the shop dog. Got Mike over here. He's no. helping out, but we're going to get to working on this exhaust. We've got a lot to do. Turn the shop heater on, crawl under there, start wrenching. You got anything to say? I like uh, JKs too. Like <laughs> Yo, I need something strictly a CJ day guy, but. I like JKs all. too. Whatever. I'm not lying. Right, that's yeah. enough. That's <laughs> enough. So like any project, whether it's a skid plate, body armor, bumpers, anything that comes bare metal, it's important to test fit it and mock it up before you paint it and finish the install. Mike and I went ahead and test fit this under the Jeep and it fits really good. It is super, super beefy. So it is steel construction. We have gussets over here. We have a nice raised lip. They make this to work with the three link kit or the non three link kit. So this is a three link kit and I have the factory JK skid compared like right there. Now I will say I've been rocking the factory skids for uh, you know, for a long time, even with the one tons and Hemi. Um, actually with the Hemi, I haven't had it, but I've been rocking this stock skid for quite a while. I've been waiting to do an upgrade. A lot of people ask about aluminum versus steel skid plates. Personally, I, I like steel. They're easy to modify. You can touch them up and they tend to just kind of like go over the rocks. Aluminum likes to stick to it. Do you have a preference, steel or uh, aluminum skid plates? Uh, all I know is on a skid plate, it needs to be able to support the full weight yep. of the Jeep yeah, I'll, or I'll, the vehicle because the odds of turtling on a rock are very good. Very high. So, a, lot of, a lot of people love aluminum skid plates. And I, there, there is a benefit. There's a lot of weight savings there. But when it comes to like serious hardcore stuff, I prefer steel. And I know a lot of people, Ultra 4 Racers, some of those are running aluminum too. But you know, in my, in my mind, I like steel skid plates into that. But we do have to modify this a little bit to fit my setup. This cutout right here is for the control arm link on the front three link. I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger so we have enough room for flex. And over here on the gussets, I'm gonna chop this out just for a little bit of exhaust clearance wise since we're running that way. Now we're gonna have to try to use the ARB dual compressor from the Gladiator because I don't have a compressor yet in the shop. But I did change out the lighting since the last video. Can you, did you notice the difference, Mike? Yeah, it's a little bit. It's not it's not a lot brighter, but I do have new high bay lights coming in I think they might be here today actually they're from hyperlight and they're high bay lights I hope that fills in the rest of these voids. That's enough talking The plasma cutting with the ARB air compressor it does work, but it's not the best it kept uh, cutting off on me it did work though So we're gonna clean up those edges Go ahead and turn this off so I know a while ago I did the video on this 12 volt setup back here. I think I am gonna change it up and do another video on it. I'm gonna change, change all of this up, probably actually change the entire rear setup. So we're gonna make another one for this as well as one for the JK. Cassie got off work a few minutes ago and she found the owner of the dog. Her name is Clover. She's got to, kind of got to have fun in the gear and gadgets garage today. She was up here for about 10 hours. Yeah, but it's time to go back to your home. Ben won't let me adopt another uh, homeless No, dog. this is how it happened with our last <laughs> one, Milo. We're gonna drop her off. As you can tell, there's just a bunch of stuff over here. I'm glad you finally found the owner. Yeah, me too. You ready to go? Let's go. Oh, cutie. After a few modifications to the skid plate, it was time to paint it. So I've never used this paint before. Mike just painted it. He swears by this stuff, so I figured we'd give it a shot. Ace uh, semi uh, satin 
and it works really good. It holds Rust up. stop. Yeah, Mike says it's good, so I figured we'll give it a shot. Got one coat on there. Now, in the meantime, while Mike was painting that, put up this new propane heater for the shop. So in the past, we've been using this, uh, I mean, for the past few months. It's been really cold. This uh, diesel heater has been working amazing, but it's definitely kind of a, uh, a temporary solution. And over there we have the space heater. But this heater right here is what will really keep this area nice and warm. So this was originally a natural gas heater and we're converting it to propane. Let me go ahead and show you the mount. As you can tell, it's simple, just Unistrat bolted lag bolts to the, uh, the six by six and then have a little mount up here. Now this does swivel side to side, but I'm gonna put a flex pipe right here so we can actually use that swivel. For now, it is plumbed down to a temporary propane tank connection there. Got 40 pounds and 20 pounds out back there that we'll hook it up to. Converting it from natural gas to propane, I've never done that. Bought this kit right here. It was an $80 kit for a new jet and a tiny little regulator spring. So 80 bucks for that. I was expecting more of like a conversion kit, but it is what it is. We're gonna convert that. And then we do have to figure out how to adjust the regulator for the output of the regulator. So I don't really know anything about that. We're gonna have to YouTube it and uh, figure out that. We're gonna let this dry, do another coat, and then get it up in there and start doing the exhaust modifications. Now this is the Barnes Bolt-On JK skid plate and it would work perfectly fine, but with the Hemi, the way we have to route the exhaust, the exhaust has to be bigger as well. It's just not gonna work with the skid plate. So that was the reason for these cutouts. And the whole deal is nobody makes any of this stuff. So. No, and, that, and that's the great thing is that a steel skid plate, back to my point against aluminum versus steel, is the steel, we can cut this out, we can weld to it if we want, whereas an aluminum skid plate, modifying it is a little bit harder. Sure, you can grind it, but unless you have a TIG set up and you're good at welding aluminum, it's a little more hard, it's, it's a lot harder to modify. We're good, let this dry, let's get to it. We have the skid mocked up, it's painted, and this thing looks really, really nice and well designed under here. So we keep this little bolt over here from the factory, we keep our hardware, but we are gonna have flag nuts up in here on the side of the cross member to snake in there. And it's really neat that Barnes gives us these bolt head protectors. So Mike was talking about it, Mike's like, man, we need to buy a pack of like 10 of them just to put on the rig, so that's pretty neat. But everything's mocked up here in place. Now, one thing I really do like about this skid, especially for my swap, is that not only does this skid incorporate into the cross member tie-in right there, but it does all over the spot, like all over. So, but by having this, it reinforces the cross member because my links are built into the cross member. So pretty much all the stress is on this factory bracket up here, which is pretty thin. So by tying this 316 skid, skid plate to it, it definitely beefs up that mount. So with that mocked up in place, it's time to build the exhaust. So Mike and I went ahead and took off the old down pipes with the cats on there chopped it off since we're rerouting it and welded v-bands on so we're letting this dry put some high temp paint on there just to keep it looking pretty up under there before I throw those exhaust bolts on i want to show you guys this it's been like two years since i've had this and i showed everybody on the youtube channel a while back but they sell them in metric and standard versions but it's a bolt cleaner so all you do is pick the hole whether it's metric or standard and you back it, you run it back and forth a few times, and all of the crud comes out here on the table. So, or your trash can, whatever. But it's really neat, I'll throw a link in the video description, I forget who makes them, but for projects like this where you just need to really clean off the old bolts, super simple to do. And with a little bit of snow here in Oklahoma City, I am now at a freezing halt. So I'm waiting on V-band clamps, and some other exhaust accessories to build my own exhaust and it was supposed to come in the mail today. However, this snow slash ice mixture that's been here for about two days is really holding things up. So in the meantime, we're gonna take the JT, the only working Jeep at this time, to Crossbar Off-Road Park. So me and Mike, I'm gonna go pick Mike up. We're gonna bomb around on some snowy ice trails, see how the Gladiator does. Stuff is super slick, we're gonna find out. So we just got here to the front office at the park and uh, it turns out that, who was it? Who's, who, who's buying the side-by-side? -side? Uh, Schaefer Smith is buying a side-by-side -side out of Texas. Yep. And the guy hasn't left yet. The guy hasn't left Texas yet. So we're gonna see how far we can make it up. The game plan was uh, to check out the side-by-side. -side. You know, uh, he wanted Mike to look it over. He's picking up a Maverick X3 and he just wants to make sure it's all- Make sure it's all there. Everything works. Yep. So let's go <laughs> have some fun. Let's get some snow wheeling in and then make it home to finish this exhaust, hopefully sometime. No, this isn't bad at all. It still has a little bit of, I mean, you can, 
good. Until I slide off a cliff. I think back up and try that one more time and I think he got it. The first few times I did in just four high um, with both front and rear locked and I could tell that the stability, the traction control was still kicking in so I put in the off-road plus and I don't know, did you hear the differences yeah. in the shift points and everything? Yeah. And it definitely helped. I need to get a mount set up for in here so we yeah. just plug it up and then talk. We're good as long as... Nope, no, grabbing the tire. I mean, and I know I haven't, I didn't air down or anything, so that's not helping, but like there was zero, zero prep for this. Yeah. Zero prep, not air down or anything. So you need to be extremely careful here. It's a 150 foot cliff right here where we're getting In off. the ice? Yeah. Oh, so, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It is just solid ice. So this is basically our overlook for uh, where they run the ultra line when they come through with uh, ultra four. All right, Mike, you go down there and I'll throw the camera to him. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So there's, there's rocks out there. You could have a great overlook, but I am not touching that today. That looks, nope. Do we turn around and go back or do we go down this? So the trail continues down, way down there. And uh, this is actually called Riley's Ridge. So the ridge line that we came in is Riley's Ridge. It goes down and you start uh, the waterfall uh, cascade up. And there's seven waterfalls that we go through. We have an open amphitheater down here now that we can just go in. And that's where all the observers can watch the Ultra 4. Probably get about, I don't know, 50 60 jeeps down in there to watch and it's that's a, pretty it's a cool good spot some of this stuff is pretty slick oh yeah it's definitely slick but i'm gonna try to go down here and then do a three-point turn and see how it does coming up the rocks all right Nice and easy, nice and easy. Yep. They still got it in the snow too. Yep. They're not huge boulders, but that's a pretty big, it's a pretty steep incline that you can't tell, but that was impressive, even in the snow. Yeah. With the ultra rains. So, I mean, it's really not all that bad, but we don't want to get so far down into the park that we're going to need somebody to come get us out. Oh, yeah. enough speed. <laughs> yeah. We're good. Yeah. Unfortunately, the parts for the rest of the exhaust never came in. I know the original plan in this video was to finish the exhaust and skid plate, but without the parts, we're not gonna be able to knock it out. And I've realized that making consistent content for you guys is more important than starting a project and finishing it in a video. And I've tried doing that before, but then I wind up not putting a video out for three weeks. So we're gonna end here until I get the V-bands. And the reason for that is because I wanna put a V-band, um, I'm actually gonna extend this out, put it here so I can you know, change the mufflers out if needed without dropping the skid plate. The other two V-bands are on the front side of the skid plate and the skid plate turned out really nice. It ties into the gas tank skid plate, whether you have the factory one or aftermarket. Goes to the frame over here and then of course up on the cross member, but that turned out really nice. And the two and a half inch dual exhaust is gonna be even cooler. I'm gonna bring it out here, put an H pipe in it so it balances the sound really, really good for the Hemi. And then I'm gonna squeeze two round mufflers up in here and then I'm still trying to figure out what we're doing going back. But I have an idea of exiting the exhaust through the barn's bumper. So 
cutting these out to like a four inch hole and exiting out the bumper, which would be extremely cool. It would look really cool and I've never seen it done. However, on this bumper, I don't think it's possible. We might have to go with the Barnes frame chop bumper. So we get rid of this cross member back here and we can run the exhaust through. If I can make that work, I'm gonna do it because that sounds extremely cool. Now I know I've mentioned it before, but Barnes does offer a 10% off discount code using the code JKGG. All the information for that is gonna be in the video description. You do have to log in and make an account, but all of that information will be below. I think that's it for this video. I wanna make sure this is out and edited in time for the weekend upload. There's still a lot of projects to do. Still in the process of adding even more lights. I'm gonna show you guys these. They're insanely bright from Hyperlight. I need to get an extra tall ladder to make sure I can get them all the way up in there. I bought six of them, but I think I'm only gonna need three, but I really need to make sure I can recess them all the way up in the top of the shop. That way it's not as blinding right there, but I need an extremely tall ladder. So that is it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Please give a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time. See you later.